Hello and welcome to the Gadgets and Gizmo show on Headlines Today. I'm Siddharth Sharma. And over the next half an hour, we've lined up for you guys some interesting reviews and news from the world of technology. But before we begin, let's take a look at the lineup. On the show this week, which is the best smartphone under Rs 10,000? We get you a guide on that. Also, best camera apps on the show. And there's a new 8-bit game that is making some waves. Now, Panasonic is not that famous in India for making smartphones. Yet, they came up with a new one recently. And this one is called the Panasonic Eluga U. We'll get you a review on the show. But first, let us tell you what the specs are like. This is the all-new Panasonic Eluga. Panasonic has come out with this smartphone for the Indian consumers at a price tag of 18,990 rupees. Eluga offers a 5-inch 1280 by 720 pixels HD IPS OGS display with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection. It runs on a 1.2 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 processor by Qualcomm with Adreno 305 GPU. Eluga also operates on Android 4.4.2 operating system and offers dual SIM functionality. At the back, you get a 13 megapixel rear camera with LED flash and is compatible with 1080p video recording. There's also a 2 megapixel front facing camera. Inbuilt storage is 16 GB and there's a 2500 milliampere lithium ion battery. All right, those were the specs on the all new Panasonic Eluga U. Is it good or just another average Android smartphone? Well, to tell more about that, we are joined now by Sahil Gupta, who's an assistant editor with India Today Digital, and he tells us whether this phone is worth it or not. So this is the new Panasonic Eluga U. It's their latest smartphone and it's their first smartphone in India to be powered by a Qualcomm processor. Design-wise, this phone is a very attractive looking phone. It has got a glass back and it reminds us of the Google Nexus 4. It's an incredibly slim phone at 7.95 mm and it weighs only 141 grams. It's very balanced to hold and it's generally a very comfortable phone in the hand. On the front, you have a 720p 5-inch IPS screen which has got great viewing angles, good color fidelity and generally it's pretty bright even under direct sunlight. Overall, we are pretty impressed by the display and at this price point, we just think that perhaps it could have offered a higher resolution 1080p screen. On the back, the Luga has a 13 megapixel camera with a LED flash. It's a decent camera, it takes decent photos in normal lighting. In low lighting, it stumbles a bit, but it's very good for the price the phone is offered at. On the front, it has a 2 megapixel camera, which is pretty standard for most smartphones. In normal lighting, it'll take decent selfies, but in low light, there's no point in taking selfies with it because there's literally it can't absorb a lot of light in it. This one is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 processor tied up with 2GB of RAM. The performance is very fluid and generally we, we could navigate through the user interface and could play multiple games and have multiple apps running simultaneously without many hitches. Mm -hmm. 
Notably, the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, Snapdragon 400 in this case, was also used on the Moto G, which we know to be a fine performer. Likewise, this phone is also a fine performer and performance issues are not a problem with it. The Panasonic Eluga U is powered by Android 4.4 KitKat, but unique to this phone are two launchers. Unlike most smartphones, this phone has two launchers. One is a stock Android KitKat launcher, but there's another launcher which Panasonic calls the Fit Home launcher. The main USP of the Fit Home launcher is that it allows the user to interact with most of the apps with a single hand. The problem with the 5 inch screen is that single handed usage is not easy, but because the Fit Home launcher keeps most of the apps in the bottom half of the uh, display, so the user can use the phone with a single thumb. On the back, it has got a 2500 milliampere battery. It's not removable because it has a unibody design, but in general usage, one can easily last a day and not have any issues. At Rs 18,990, we believe this phone is slightly overpriced considering you have offerings like the Moto G retailing for around 12,000 and you have the Asus Zenfone 5. Then you also have a really advanced phone like the Xiaomi Mi 3 retailing for 14,000. But if you're looking for a phone with an attractive design, a slick user interface and performance, then this is a decent option. Now, I'm sure many of us have played or heard about the game called Flappy Bird, the frustrating 8-bit game that took the world by storm. Sadly, it was pulled off the Apple and the Android Play Store, but the ones who still have the game on their smart devices enjoy the frustrating part of it. And now, the developer has come out with a second addition to this 8-bit marvelous game. It's called Swing Copters. Let's take a look. This time around, Dong Guen seems to have clearly decided not to make the gameplay as frustrating as the original title, but somehow manages to add that Flappy Bird level of toughness in the new title. Swing Copters with its main character will let you climb horizontally to progress through the levels. This time around though, it's a bit more complicated thanks to additional swinging obstacles that come your way. It's all about getting the timing right as the swinging obstacle seems to move in sync. Still then, it's the lead character that seems to flutter about in a random movement that makes the game tough as hell. Swing Copters is available as a free download with ads or for a price of 60 rupees for a version without them on both Google Play and iOS. Now, camera is one thing on our smart devices that we use the most to capture those special images and record videos and then share it on the social networking platform. So we thought, why not list down some of the hot apps right now that are doing really good in the camera department. Here is our pick of the best camera apps that you can download onto your smart devices for an enhanced photography experience. Camera Plus is our pick for the best camera app as it's fast, easy to use, feature packed and consistently updated. Camera Plus is fantastic for a number of reasons. But the best feature Camera Plus adds is the ability to set focus and exposure separately. You also get a variety of shooting modes including a stabilizer, timer and burst mode. 
a solid digital zoom and a grid to make sure your compositions are interesting. This is a free app on both Google Play and Apple App Store. VSEO Cam falls somewhere between Camera Plus and Instagram. It's a powerful editing tool that's full of filters to enhance your images. Is easy to use, has a ton of advanced filters and provides a place to share your photos if you want. The features are easy to use and you can easily edit exposure, temperature and contrast with just a couple taps. If you want, you can upload all your photos to your own page on VSCO Grid, which also has options for copywriting your photos. It's free with in-app purchases for filters on Google Play and App Store. Photoshop Touch is next on the list. For most people, the feature set in Photoshop Touch is overkill. But if you use Photoshop a lot and need to edit on the go, this is your best option. You're able to mess around with layers and selections. Make adjustments and sync your work between your smart device and your desktop. Photoshop Touch has so many features that it's actually not that intuitive to use. But if you're experienced in Photoshop, you'll get the hang of it eventually. If this, then that. Yes, it's the name of an app. The IFTTT app isn't a photography app. But it's an excellent app to keep around if you take pictures with your phone. With IFTTT, you can set it up so that every picture you take is backed up to Dropbox or Flickr automatically. If you want more granular control, you can send every picture taken with the rear camera to Instagram. Send every photo added to a particular album to Facebook or one of a ton of the other photo-specific recipes. IFTTT is basically a way to automate where your photos go and once you've set up, you won't have to think about them again. IFTTT is a free app on both Android and iOS. Gallery Vault is a privacy app for the images and videos that you take. Android users of Gallery Vault can hide the application's icon and import media to a safe location set up by the application. In other words, Gallery Vault offers a free stealth mode, a feature otherwise available only on paid apps. The app has a simple user interface. All files hidden by the app are encrypted. After you launch the app by keying in the correct passcode, you can browse all media inside the app. The media browser design allows for a smooth photo and video viewing experience. Gallery Wall's clean interface, unique stealth mode and the nifty shake mode are features to look out for. And best of all this is also a free app on both Android and iOS. And with that, it's time for us to take a very small break on the show. But you guys don't go anywhere because there's a lot more technology action coming your way on the other side.